Hello everyone, my name's Kotetsu and welcome back to my channel. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about 10 reasons why you should collect Ultramarines or more kind of specifically things that will enhance your enjoyment of the fact you do collect Ultramarines. And uh, yeah, I've only just really started collecting them within the last couple of weeks. Before that, I was collecting Imperial Fist. And I was getting so frustrated with the fact I couldn't paint them with the yellow. Yellow notoriously is so hard to paint. That I decided I would do a test model in the Ultramarines colours. And I was so happy with how it turned out that I thought, okay, let's go with that. You know, I'm really fussy about how I paint them. I'm a little bit too much of a perfectionist. It takes me absolutely hours to paint each one. I want them looking really good, kind of similar to what you see on the uh, website. So that was kind of the thing that motivated me to change. But since then, I've noticed a whole host of things that are enhancing my enjoyment of the fact that I'm collecting Ultramarines. And they were things I never really noticed before. And in fact, kind of when I wasn't collecting them, I would say they were actually negative things. They were things that kind of annoyed me. So that's my disclaimer to this video, that we are going to be looking at this from a positive perspective towards Ultramarines. I know out there there is a lot of hate towards Ultramarines. I know that Matt Ward did a whole host of damage saying that basically all the chapters wish they were Ultramarines and you get people saying they're too boring, they're too blue, they're too everywhere. So this video is not going to change your mind, okay? If you hate Ultramarines, that is still going to be the case after this video. And a lot of the things, as I said a second ago, that make up this list, if you hate Ultramarines, these things are probably just going to annoy you even more. Okay, so let's get that out the way right from the beginning. They're kind of things that are great for if you love Ultramarines, but they really do suck if you like all the other factions. So yeah, right, that's out of the way. Let's get into the video. So reason number one, they are the poster boys of 40k. Now, in a minute, I'll explain why that is good, because I never noticed that as being particularly a good thing until right now, for myself at least. So they are absolutely everywhere. They're in all of the artwork. They were on the Dark Imperium front cover of the box. They're getting their own comic book. They're on the front of Indomitus. Whenever they're giving away promotional exclusive extras or anything, like the uh, coin that came with Indomitus, it's got the Ultramarines chapter symbol on it. It. If you go to the Games Workshop website and click on 40k, the first thing you're going to see is Ultramarines, and down below that, three more pictures with Ultramarines. Scroll down a bit further, and yeah, you get the picture. Look at all these Ultramarines. But I never particularly noticed that. It didn't really bother me. I know some people find it a bit annoying that they're kind of everywhere. But it's only when I started collecting Ultramarines that I was like, oh, this is actually quite cool. It's actually really nice to see your kind of faction being represented absolutely everywhere. So yeah, I know that that's going to annoy some people. It's not so good for the other chapters of uh, Space Marines, but it's pretty good if you're an Ultramarines fan. So reason number two is the fact that their range is absolutely enormous. Again, head over to Games Workshop, click on Space Marines and scroll down to Ultramarines. There are 112 different options to choose from across 10 different pages. The range is absolutely enormous and obviously that's only a good thing if you collect Ultramarines because it gives you tons of choice and often there are even different like variations of different units. So for example, if we were to look at the Librarian, here's the one in Phobos armor. Down below, there's one with a power sword. There were two lieutenants that came with the uh, Dark Imperium set. There's another one in the new Indomitus set. That's five variations of Primaris Lieutenant, and I'm sure there are more. It's only a good thing having more choice if uh, that's the one army you want to collect. So to give you an example of why it can be a bad thing having a small range, with Age of Sigmar, the factions are sometimes absolutely tiny. There are some factions that literally have 10 more models in the entire range and what that meant for me is that even if I absolutely loved that range I would buy all of the models and then I'd kind of get bored because I'm like well what do I get next 
what am I going to paint when I've done them all? I don't want to just sit there painting the same things over and over again. So yeah, at the moment, I am absolutely loving the fact that there is so much choice with this faction. And I really think it is the gold standard. I wish that every faction in all of Games Workshop, you could click on their page and they had these amount of models to choose from. Again, the counter argument is that some people will be annoyed that there aren't more for their own faction, which is totally valid and I totally understand. But right, reason number three, they are really easy to paint. As I said, doing uh, Imperial Fists was driving me mad. I think White Scars would also drive me mad. These guys are really easy to paint. It takes me a while to do them. I'm a slow painter. What you're looking at on the screen at the moment is my current project that I'm working on, but they're so easy to paint and they look really, really good with kind of minimal effort, I would say. But not only that, the paints in the Citadel range are not all equal. Some of them are watery, some of them are chalk, some of them are too transparent, some of them are too thick, but for some reason the paints for the Ultramarines just seem absolutely spot on. McCrag Blue is one of the best spray paints they've ever made. I don't understand how it seems to be so consistent every time. It's never been chalky, it's never been watery, not for me at least, and I've gone through a few cans of it. But not only that, it seems to dry so quickly. I've had mishaps where I've sprayed a model and it's fallen off my double-sided tape onto the grass and it's absolutely wrecked it and I've had to try and strip it and respray it. But I reckon if that happened with McCrag Blue, it would probably be dry before it had even fallen fallen off the stick in the first place. But the same goes for uh, the base paints and the layers that you primarily need for this faction. They just seem to have such good coverage and consistency. So that's reason number three, really easy to paint. Reason number four, they actually have a Primark that's alive in the current timeline of 40k. Now, at the moment, he is the only loyalist Primark who has a model. Reboot is really powerful. He's got all these amazing aura buffs where he can uh, re-roll failed hit rolls within six inches. He's got a three up invulnerable save. He's hitting and wounding on twos. He's literally got the sword of the emperor. But even if you take away how good he is on the tabletop, from a narrative perspective, he's also really exciting as well. I'm on the fourth book in the Horus Heresy novels series, and I'm really loving the stories. I feel like it is kind of the central narrative of 40k, kind of understanding the Emperor, his children, which are obviously the Primarchs, and how Horus becomes corrupted and splits the Imperium apart. And by bringing back Roboot, they've kind of opened up such a rich narrative potential. I know some people aren't that happy they brought him back, but where I'm enjoying that series so much, I just think it's absolutely awesome. And I really enjoyed reading the Dark Imperium novel, and I've straight away gone on to the next one, Plague Wars. But that brings me straight on to point number five of why you will love collecting Ultramarines. There are so many novels surrounding the Ultramarines, there are literally tons. Dark Imperium and Plague War are particularly good because they're dealing with Roboot and how he's handling his return. I haven't read Indomitus yet, but I have just downloaded the audiobook, so I will start that shortly. But if you really enjoy the fluff, then there's nothing better than having a whole host of books to read. But whilst this is also kind of more generic to Space Marines in general, the Horus Heresy is all about Space Marines and Primarchs. So I would say even just having all of those books of which, oh my god, there are so many of them, that will also really enhance your enjoyment of collecting anything to do with Space Marines. Reason number six, what you're looking at on the screen at the moment is a collage of all of the units pretty much that I own at the moment for my Ultramarines. And this reason is, I think they are one of the cheapest factions to get into in all of 40k. Excluding the uh, Repulsor Executioner, which was really expensive, generally you can can get a Space Marine army for really cheap. So all of these guys here to uh, the right in the middle, the bikes over here, the eradicators up there, the assault intercessors, all of that lot came in a single box. The two units of intercessors, the inceptors over here, the hell blasters, those all came in the Dark Imperium set and I actually just picked them up off eBay for really cheap. The Dreadnought, that is an easy build kit, so again, it's pretty cheap relatively. The Primaris Aggressors, again, they do those as an easy build kit, and they're also from the Tooth and Claw set or the Start Collecting Space Wolf set, so again, you can probably pick those up off eBay for really cheap. But with this faction being so popular, there is tons of stuff on eBay. You get a lot of 
people buying the starter sets, breaking them down into units. I was going to make a whole video on the good, the bad and the ugly of scalping. But one way or another, I managed to put this force together for relatively, in Warhammer terms, very cheap. Maybe even the cheapest faction I've ever collected. If you think just in that one Indomitus box, you've got a thousand points of Space Marines right there. But also, if you just think of little things like Reboot, I think I picked him up for £30. If you were to look at the equivalent Primarch for the Death Guard, he is £90, or his retail price is at least. Now, don't get me wrong, looking at these two models, I think it's pretty clear which one looks better overall. I would say that Mortarian is possibly a contender for the single best model that Games Workshop has ever made for 40k. But the point is, is if you want to field a Space Marine army with Reboots, you're going to do it for around £30. With Mortarian, it's going to cost you three times that amount to kind of field the equivalent unit, even if he is more powerful, a bigger model. It does add up. Right, reason number seven. They are at the forefront of new releases. It feels like only yesterday that all of the uh, Phobos stuff came out and we've already got the Indomitus set with all of the new bikes and the Assault Intercessors. But basically the point here is that as much as it's annoying to everyone else, if you are a Space Marines fan or an Ultramarines fan, then you are never too far away from something brand new and exciting coming out for your faction. Reason number eight, they have a video game. I'm sure you've potentially heard of this game by now. It's quite old. It was made by THQ before they went bust or whatever happened to them. But I started playing this game this morning and I've had it in my Steam library for literally forever and I've never wanted to play it because it was based around the Ultramarines. But now that I collect them, I kind of looked at it with new eyes. I went in, I played some of it, and I'm actually really enjoying it. Don't get me wrong, it's not going to uh, break Metacritic with its scores. <laughs> but it's entertaining, it's a fun way to unwind, run around hacking some orcs up with a uh, chainsaw, and yeah, I'm enjoying it. It also kind of gives me hope that more of that style game are going to come in the future because I think there is so much potential for these style games set in the 40k universe. But also, there is an Ultramarines movie, which I also watched a couple of days ago. And again, it's not going to be uh, winning any Oscars. It's not particularly fantastic, but it was quite enjoyable. And it was written by Dan Abnett, who is absolutely astonishingly good at writing the novels. But yeah, I would say it's worth checking out. It features uh, the Imperial Fists and the Ultramarines. It kind of felt, if I was going to compare it to something, a little bit like an episode of the Star Wars Clone Wars series. But if they made something like this into an animated series with like, say, I don't know, a couple of hundred episodes, I would be so over the moon. And I think that that could potentially work better than Games Workshop trying to make a whole load of movies. Potentially a lot cheaper as well. But I mean, the CGI is a bit wonky, but it was entertaining for what it was. Right, reason number nine, Space Marines actually ended 8th edition on a fairly good high. For years, Space Marines were just not very competitive, but they really had have been playing incredibly well recently. They've been super powerful, they've been at the top of loads of tournaments. Whilst I myself am not really into super competitive gameplay, and I find super competitive lists generally very boring where they just spam something that's very competitive or overpowered, it's nice to know that you can field a decent force and generally stack up fairly well against whatever you're going to play against. They pretty much have a tool for every job and no major, major weakness. I know in 9th edition they've put all of the points costs pretty much up for Space Marines because they were so powerful and I guess time will tell how that impacts their uh, overall performance. But either way, if you want to, uh, like me, just have some casual fun games, you will be doing absolutely fine. And the final reason that I've saved for number 10 is basically who they are and what they represent. There aren't really any good guys per se in Warhammer 40k. The Imperium of Man is basically horrific and monstrous, but I would say the Ultramarines come fairly close to being that good guy faction. Their Primarch pretty much wrote the rulebook on how the rest of the uh, Space Marines should behave, which again, other chapters are going to hate the fact that that was written into the law. But the idea is they are meant to embody everything that the Imperium should be. The Emperor initially had a vision and 
and that vision was his great crusade to conquer the stars, bring everything under his flag, and his vision gets horribly twisted, corrupted, absolutely butchered by the Horus Heresy. But the Ultramarines are noble, they're loyal, they're dependable, and I find it quite fascinating that even the reawakening of their Primarch is something that potentially could have started a civil war, which they explain in uh, Dark Imperium, the novel, because basically the Imperium of Man has turned to this horrible, corrupt, sickening, overzealous, religious beast and he immediately wakes up and says why have you been worshipping me why are you worshipping the emperor we're not gods we never were and yeah the politics gets really complicated really fast and things basically could have ended up in a civil war but if you really like a faction being kind of the stereotypical good guys then chances are you will be fairly happy with the ultramarines so there we have it those are my 10 reasons why you will love collecting ultramarines and kind of 10 things that will enhance your enjoyment of this faction i know that these reasons are going to annoy a lot of people i know there's a lot of hate out there but yeah for people like me it's certainly an eye opener to look at things from the other side of the coin but anyway i'm going to leave this video here don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed it don't forget to subscribe if you are new to my channel and i will see you guys really soon in the next video